She's from Mexico. Um, we have Anju Mangal from Fiji. Uh, we have Sarah Kidden from Uganda. She's from the Ford Mozilla o Open Web Fellow. Nuria from Afghanistan. She's been involved with uh, the Afghan SIG uh, School of Internet Governance. And we have had various contributors to this session too, which includes Evelyn Namura from Uganda, Gustavo Paiva from Brazil, uh, Silvia Canari from Kenya, and Renata. Um, some of them, due to funds, have not been able to come, but they would try to join us online. So when we are going into this subject, uh, today we would be sharing few of our findings, which we had uh, we done a small preliminary study amongst women from Global South to find out uh, what are the challenges which they perceive to um, as well as best practices and what would be the best public policies or social aspects which need improvement uh, so that we can have a more gender inclusive uh, networked future. Um, we would be sharing those uh, in brief about those uh, of our preliminary studies, but we would like to hear more from you too. Um, our, uh, by the Global South, um, you know, we wanted to try to define it. It also means uh, people living from in the developed countries, um, the less developed regions, as and also the economically or the poorer regions in the north, uh, in the wealthy nations. So that's the terminology of uh, Global South, which we have um, looked at for our study. Um, our survey, we had an initial survey, which we had after uh, looking at the secondary resources. Um, we had 19 experts from the developing and least developed countries of Asia Pacific, as well as the Middle East and North Africa, uh, giving their views on a detailed questionnaire. Um, the opinions of the questionnaire were then synthesized to form a, a, a smaller or shorter brief questionnaire, which was vetted by certain um, experts. And then we had the survey carried on, um, which where 162 participants from 54 countries participated. Um, the study obviously has its limitation because it is a snapshot of a very short period of time and um, it is a more generalized view towards gender. And by gender, the definition includes a lot more things, but we've restricted to only women for our study at this point. Uh, obviously, we would like to do, in, as a next step, the more in-depth study on the subject um, so that we can investigate in more details uh, in a granular way. So some of these uh, observations which we had is more than 67% of the respondents felt that the, their country is not gender inclusive. And um, most of the nations are halfway towards it. It's not that everyone is towards the beginning, but um, we are somewhere in the middle. The top challenges which were identified as hampering the creation of a gender inclusive digital world were existing social and cultural norms in the society about the role of women, the low literacy rates due to lack of access and opportunities to education, digital skills and ICT, lack of access to infrastructure, resources, devices and relevant content, the lack of comprehensive approach towards women empowerment including understanding of what gender equality is and the issues involved, and inadequate policy implementations, limited access to financial support and opportunities, workplace gender equality issues, issues of tri trust and privacy online, lack of role models and very few role models and a limited platform to interact, inadequate research to base evidence on these issues. And the wish list for ensuring a gender inclusive uh, online world is policy reforms, promoting literacy and ICT skills amongst women and encouraging digital literacy. Simultaneously, policy reforms for ensuring gender inclusive access to internet, building trust online, including better legislation and enforcement of laws against online harassment, 
economic incentives to encourage diversity in the workforce, encouraging more engagement amongst women networks. They also felt that government-led initiatives and reforms are, con are important for improving the gender rights, especially since under the SDG 17, all government policy makers are mandated to include policy relate related to reduce the gender gap. However, uh, for the correct, Im the correct implementation and execution of policies was, was um, felt to be more critical because many places you have policies but they have not been um, implemented in the right sense. The proactive initiatives of business, awareness and capacity development by the uh, civil society, technical innovation by the technical community were also considered important for achieving a gender neutral uh, digital future. A in a summary, it, it has to be a multi-stakeholder approach where everyone works together. Um, so these were some of the findings we had. We would like to hear more from you, but before that, um, we would start with the speakers in terms of, you know, you have three minutes to go to share what your perspectives are from the region with respect to the study and any other comments. Angie, can I start with you first? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this incredible women uh, invite me at, at this proposal. Uh, Redefine rights of gender inclusive network future. What about talking? What, what are talking about? Uh, young women face the same challenge but in other applications. Akisami said in the May session of gender, they gave us a platform where it's more difficult to the women. Now, besides exercising our rights in outside the space, we also want to exercise the same rights online space. One of the topics that he mentioned in the answer in consultation is safety of women in only space. The Wibwife Wife Foundation report says that seven or ten young women who uh, use the internet only daily based with and surfed abuse on online. In my country, Mexico, one more time, one occasion there, uh, he been combines where tell use sending and news news is bad. They never tell use uh, about all rights. It is uh, not on talking about access to the internet. It's talking about rights, about the quality of connection, what our practice, our security, what, uh, how important it is to uh, ensure that violence and sanction it by law in local and from all countries. Uh, the Ley de Acceso a una Vida Libre de Violencia uh, in my country um, include a reform the last year that add as a type violence. That say, disseminate and publish without consent uh, through and technolog technological means, images or recording with erotic or sexual content obtained with or without authors of the person surfing the affection. In case uh, of identify the sexual content without public authorization, you should uh, go to the state's office, the uh, office uh, policy in Aguascalientes, to file a report to who is responsible if you not publish. The first solution uh, to world process, it requires that police judge at a heavy gender perspective and digital vision of the issues. And that the Women's Institute give a workshop a leadership at course and women's digital rights. It's important uh, to um, we have network women, the participant and decision making, were as team uh, B and solidarity. Free a life, uh, free violence for women, digital space. Um, vivas y libres nos queremos. Thank you. Thank you, Angie, for highlighting that um, the violence or uh, against women online should is something which needs to be taken up in a bigger way. Can, may I ex uh, ask Nuria to present her views from her country's perspective, Afghanistan? Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Nuria Ahmadi from Afghanistan. 
and uh, I would uh, share with you my perspectives, uh, I mean, uh, f from, uh, from my country, like uh, gender and women right feature in internet governance and multiple interconnected ways like uh, access, content, and uh, uh, representation. Of course, it's not limited to these three, but uh, these three things are very important uh, as I consider them. So uh, ICTs create new, uh, new ways for people to live and uh, these uh, new ways reflect real life problems. So a woman should assert their rights here too with determination and without any delay. Women may not have been active, uh, may, not, may not have been very active in the very first uh, days when uh, internet comes uh, uh, in, the, in, in the real world, but now uh, the rapid pace of the change online means they need to participate now to ensure the future of the internet is shaped, taking into account the women's rights uh, concerns. So when we are designing a tech, a tool, a, a policy to sort out an issue emerging in any of the domains constructing our lives, uh, like uh, poli politics, healthcare, labor, uh, property or education, environment, uh, in all of these areas, adopting an intersectional perspective is greatly beneficial. So an answer to those three questions, uh, uh, which is mentioned in, in, in the report, uh, from Afghanistan perspective, the five existing uh, challenges, the five important challenges are uh, considered uh, culture and traditional, uh, cu culture and traditions. Uh, that don't allow women to, uh, to, uh, to participate actively in, in uh, IG-related issues or uh, in new technology, um, using new technology and making policies for new technology and digitalizing uh, data or anything. And the other uh, challenging, the big challenging issue is digital literacy that we, we, have to, uh, we, we have to make capacity among women and females and uh, train them how to use new technology to, to, to defend their rights, to, uh, to, to, facilitate their, uh, to facilitate their lives and uh, how, to, uh, how to use it and their own ways of benefit. And the, the third point is limited access. The, of course, it is a big issue not only for females, but <coughs> men, but, 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 but uh, men are like, uh, uh, based on uh, uh, information from MCIT of Afghanistan, Ministry of Information and Communication Technology in Afghanistan, 2.7 million internet users are in Afghanistan, that 1.7 million has access to so social media like Facebook, Twitter, anything. 10% are women, out of which only, uh, like one person to use their uh, identi identities and, their, and social media. So the other, uh, the other big challenge can be the privacy because they can't take uh, the, uh, for many reasons like uh, violence against women and uh, 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 cyberbullying and uh, for those reasons they can't use their identity online. So this is a big issue. And uh, for, for for making capacities, that, uh, there should be many, uh, many communities for, for making capacity among females uh, so that they can have a part in developing uh, ICT-related issues in country and having part in IC sector, ICT sector of Afghanistan. We are a community, NETWA, National Information Technology Professional Association of Afghanistan, that we are trying to make capacity among people. Uh, like we had a, a, a school of internet governance in Kabul in, back in April of 2016, when we tried our best to, uh, to, to involve women uh, uh, to an amount to an extent, uh, like uh, it couldn't be equal, but uh, we tried to involve women uh, among participants and the, the, the speakers, and I was one of the speakers, but uh, there were more participants, uh, female participants in that school. So we are considering to, to, to uh, have that, those kind of events uh, more and more and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and take into account the participation of female uh, females and, and those areas. So, uh, and a policy, uh, the top three policies that uh, can be, uh, can be uh, taken to account for, uh, for, for, for making these things uh, clear, like uh, digital literacy, digital access, and uh, law protecting rights for women uh, and children online. These three things are very important to, uh, to, 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 to be considered in policy making for the future of yeah, for, yeah, that's it. These, these three things, I think, very important for 
to be considered for policy making and the uh, future of internet. Yeah. Thank you, Nuria. I know you want to add more, especially <laughs> since you come from a country which has a lot of challenges in, for women. Uh, Sarah, may I request you to speak your perspectives <coughs> from the African, uh, your African perspective, though it's very broad, but let's keep it to three minutes. Uh, so, hi everyone. Um, I think I'm going to start from the social cultural aspect and I know many people in this room experience the same thing that we do. <coughs> from where I come from, women belong, you know, to the kitchen, your house makers, and if there's an opportunity to take someone to school, if a family doesn't have enough money and they have to pay for between a girl and a boy, they'll definitely send the boy. Uh, I, I'm sure, I don't know if that's the same in developed countries, but I know in developing countries we go through that a lot. But is that all women can do? Housemakers, really? We need to do more. <coughs> We've seen, um, if you read about the history of computing, you see that there are women actually were the ones involved in the beginning of the internet. So computing, Grace Hopper, and many other people. So there are those very strong women, and yet on this other side of the world, no one knows about them or no one cares about them. I think we need to do a lot to you know, sort of encourage them and uh, role models you know, market them and tell people that there's someone like this and they were able to do it. Um, I, I think some of you watched a video that went viral of Meghan Markle when she talked about um, th that advert and they said that uh, greasy pots, w something about women and greasy pots, and she, she actually advocated for it and they were able to change it. So there are very many issues that we go through as African women. If you go to a class, a science class, you'll find I know personally I was in a class and there was only two of us and everyone thought we were strange. Like, how can you be in this class? You know, why didn't you go and do fine art or something? It was a technical drawing class. But I mean, why should we have such stereotypes? Why should you think that science is meant for men? Or why should you think that women shouldn't use an, the internet? And it even goes beyond that. It goes to things like access. In a home, if there's one device, it will definitely be for the man and not for the woman. So there's so many perspectives and, um, of course, literacy, uh, men have better literacy than men in Africa, in many African countries. That's improving a little bit, but well, we still have a lot to do. And finally, just from the government of Uganda, I know they have like 1.5, they give girls 1.5 marks to enter the university, just to encourage women, you know, to take science, to join the university. There are people who say it affects the quality of education, and well, there's a debate about that, but, um, they try to encourage girls to go to the university and to go to school. And I, w I would like to end with this statement. You know, they say when you educate a child, a girl child, you educate the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You really kept to less than your time. Uh, we, we would have more time for discussion. Anju, do you want to step in now? Okay, I should take Sarah's time. Okay, um, so in relation to survey, I, I'm sorry, my name is Anju and I represent the Pacific community and I'm from Fiji. Um, when it came to the survey, I was specifically looking at the human rights and also gender, um, women's rights, but I think it's also important to understand that it's not just about online but offline safety. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was gender is not only about women but also men. And I think we can use men um, to be powerful catalysts, um, to empower women, to also promote equality and also promote online safety, etc. And the word inclusive to me means everyone, so persons with disability, indigenous communities, um, ethnic mi uh, minorities, um, these are the people, and especially young, young, young children, and they need to be educated and they need some sort of awareness on it. And um, as per the survey and from my perspective in terms of um, in the Pacific, online safety is critical for us, especially the um, Pacific, and this was clearly mentioned in the survey. Um, but currently there's still lack of um, awareness or trainings in this sort of area. So I think this is one thing that we want to continue improving. And the challenges are, um, ICT is still progressing in the Pacific. There are a few um, rural remote areas that are still not connected. Um, and national governments uh, are focused on national ICT policies, but they're not necessarily focused on the gender aspects of it. So this has always been an issue for us. So, but we are trying to do what we can to sort of counter it. And when we talk about ICT, it's not just about 
technology, it's also about communication. So we knew, we use a lot of media, journalism, a uh, journalist, sorry, to sort of advocate and to sort of promote this sort of awareness because they themselves don't understand too much about ICT or cybersecurity, et cetera. But we use sort of them, some of them in that area to sort of advocate on it. And um, my colleagues, um, Maureen and a few others in the Pacific, they were talking about gender equality. So acknowledgement of gender equality by governments and organizations is needed. And uh, this was quite uh, uh, um, apparent in some of the, the, the survey as well. And uh, there's still lack of skills. Um, ICT is still not embedded within the different sectors as well. And this is also an issue. So a lot of the women, they don't understand about too much about internet or um, ICT in the different sectors like agriculture, health, or climate change, et cetera. And there's still lack of understanding on what gender rights and um, ICT or internet I IG means to them. They still don't understand that. And uh, the other last point that I would like to mention is um, gender harassment <laughs> and sexism in the workplace. I remember when I started work and uh, I was, because I'm a technical IT person, um, we had to carry a laptop, I'm sorry, computers, big computers and stuff. So the men were like, I don't think you can do this. You, just, you know, women should not be doing IT because you have to carry that, uh, that big um, computer. You won't be able to carry it and you won't be able to go under the, you know, <laughs> under, the, <laughs> yeah, under the, you know, to, to actually do routing or networking or cabling and stuff like that. So I think this is another thing that we need to sort of get rid of or not get rid of or maybe make people understand, not just men, but everyone generally that it's not just, ICT is just not about that or gender, you know, rights and stuff, et cetera. Thank you, Anju. Uh, may I, uh, we have a, Gustavo could not be here. He's the only male in this panel. Normally you have uh, information that these are manals, but this is a panel this time here. So we have a short video he sent. We'll try to get uh, that connected, the video. Will be difficult? Uh, or else we'll take Nadira first. Nadira is from Palestine. She would be speaking um, remotely. Yeah. Nadira, can you continue? No, you can you can proceed. You can proceed.
Thank you, Nadira. Um, So uh, we have a question from uh, from Lokesh from India. It is for Amrita. It says uh, there are hardly any scientific studies understanding the reality of gender digital divide. In many marginalized com communities, women have no agency. Do we have enough evidence as to why there is such a huge gender gap? And do you think more socio-cultural research is needed to understand this? Absolutely, there is more research which is needed uh, of women minorities, especially in the remote areas, because uh, there is lack of data to support the digital divide or how they are being left behind. Uh, the concern today is those who are not online are being left behind much more than when uh, the world was offline, and that's also a worry. So there needs to be more research uh, on these aspects. Um, so um, we would like you to share your perspectives uh, in terms of what do you think are the challenges or concerns or uh, how do you think we need to participate or women can uh, contribute together uh, in terms of building networks or participating in networks to take it forward because more or less we know the challenges or issues, but how do we go ahead or do you know of any best practices you would like to highlight upon? Anyone, it's open. Hi. Oh, sure. Um, it's Joan Kerr for the record. Um, great, I love the stories and I uh, unfortunately haven't um, read the survey, but I would love to see it in its uh, pure form and, and some of the responses if that's okay. Uh, so it's a personal request. Um, so um, in hearing the panel um, uh, identify some of the challenges from a personal level or from their local levels. One of the challenges that I see overall, uh, having been involved in this for a while, is the corporate challenge of grassroots doing um, the dirty work and the, uh, the big organizations come in and just sort of scoop it up um, and no one's talking about that. And so it's sort of like, yeah, it's okay, you've done your thing, bye-bye. We can now do the policies and the frameworks and, and we'll do the work for you because, yeah, um, you know, the house is clean now so we just maintain it sort of thing. So how do we, um, and, and that's sort of demotivating to community because all of a sudden they've lost that personal touch, they've lost that connectivity because they're told how it should be interpreted or how it should be um, addressed or what actions are to be made. And if you want money, this is what we're gonna do. So how, how do we overcome uh, such a challenge? And, and, and was that, could we maybe address that in the future if we, we haven't thought about it um, uh, on, from a community level, uh, how do we work together so that we don't get displaced, I guess? Thank you. Any more? Yes, please. Uh, hi, my name is Noha, and I'm youth at IJF, fellow by Internet Society. Um, I would like to see more well-organized uh, women-to-women mentorship programs, uh, especially from older lady uh, who had maintained a work-life balance. Um, I face like a difficulty to find uh, a mentor or a, mo a role model to look for in the MENA region in the ICT field. So yeah, um, a mentorship program will be beneficial. Thank you. Yes, anyone? Gunella, do you want to share? Oh, yes. It's okay. Uh, hello, I'm Belen Luna. I'm from Bolivia. Um, a minute. Yeah, something that is kind of bothering me uh, when we are talking about the Global South is that we are not seeing also the gaps that are between different countries in the Global South itself. And most of the policies, or at least that what we are being told is um, not be visible online if we don't want to get harassed. And we are, in a way, 
making a, like collaborating to the harassment culture with like similar to rape culture, don't wear a skirt so you are not going to be raped, don't be visible online so you are not going to be harassed. And in this way we are conveniently getting invisible and also being erased from the story that we are taking. And as a political active woman in my country, I wonder how can we get in the principle of left no one behind if all our policies are focused on not being visible, being protected, rather than providing safety. I think it's really important that we first build the capacities in different countries, at least in Bolivia. There is not that we don't, there's no people involved in this topic, it's that we don't have the capacities. And the mentorship thing that our colleague was mentioning, that's really important, we need that. But we also need the information to know that the solution is not being invisible, not being erased, not, not taking part of the digital space. Because we all know that if we are not in the digital space, we are also erased from the physical space in a way. Thank you. Yes. Um, the queue is Nuria wants to say something. Gunella? Um, yes, you and I'm sorry. And someone, Man, uh, Shabana, yes. Uh, so, in order to your question, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, about the regulations, that there should be some regulations to, uh, like, uh, when, 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 when uh, any woman uh, faces some the harassment online, uh, they don't know to whom, uh, whom, to whom should they report and uh, who is responsible and uh, uh, who is in charge of these, these things. So, but this is the main point. Actually, this is not uh, the problem in only in developing countries and many developed countries. I, do, I don't think there is any regulation specific, specific for this reason uh, that what should be done in, uh, in order to uh, online, online, uh, online harassment reports. And uh, I think no one uh, go to like maybe police to report any harassment issue or if they want to go, uh, they don't take it serious. This is an online issue, and sometimes, uh, as a, like uh, I, I, I can make you sure that, that this ha this has happened. That online issues, the online violence, has led to physical uh, violence in many societies, esp uh, especially in Afghanistan. It has happened. Then uh, this is the thing that. Uh, I was thinking about, I don't know about other countries, but in our countries, uh, this is a big issue. I don't know if there is any regulations in any of uh, developing, developed countries uh, that women has been harassed and then, then they, has, uh, they has report or they has uh, connect, contacted someone and that report uh, has been considered seriously I don't know if it, is a, uh, it has happened or not. So I, I'm, I'm also interested in this issue. In order to mentoring program, uh, as a, okay, should I? Okay, as a, as, a, as a female in a developing country, it is too much hard to, to find a program to be mentor, for mentoring uh, or, or seeking help from other women. Yeah, it is possible to, to get together and help each other, but but you have to take the first step, I think. As, of, as my own experience, uh, you should take the first step and then you can help other people, you can be mentor to other Maria. women. <laughs> I would have to cut you, we have people who want to speak. Okay, that's it. Gunella, you want to share your experiences and how we can add further to what we want to do? Yeah. Thanks, Amrita. This is Gunella Astbrink from uh, Women with Disabilities Australia. And um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Pacific, and I know Anju mentioned uh, the Pacific. Uh, um, women with disabilities are really doubly disadvantaged. Uh, a lot of it has to do with cultural issues. Um, uh, women with disabilities may be hidden away, uh, are not uh, given the educational opportunities, and uh, there is some work being done by the Pacific Disability Forum um, on surveying uh, both men and women's uh, use and non-use of um, the internet and mobile phones in four different Pacific Island countries. And um, the use by women with disabilities is markedly lower in most of those countries for a variety of reasons, cultural, educational, etc. 
So it, it really creates a lot of barriers for women with disabilities to move forwards and to, um, to be able to participate in, in the community into the future. Thank you, Gunilla. Yes, you wanted to make a comment. Good morning. I'm Charlotte from Côte d'Ivoire, and I'm so your f I, your IGF by ASOC. I, I want to see a collaborative platform open for all, where the different women from different countries can consult, share, and write the challenge, issue in the country, the experience, and, the, the, and some opportunities in the own language, local language, and maybe for national language. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Shabana Mansri. I work with Internet Society Afghanistan and also a uh, program by Tech Women Afghanistan. Uh, well, all the pro um, challenges which were discussed here, they are like the, main, um, the same challenges that uh, we all in developing countries face. And, um, and the discussions we had and also the panelists that provided information all about um, uh, gender inclusive network uh, for future. They are all like uh, this challenge or um, the uh, problem is not like a, a specific, but it's related to many different aspects as well. For example, we have the political uh, problems with the social, the economical. Uh, for for thi this reason, we need uh, um, like uh, different levels or different stakeholders. Uh, engagement. For example, we need to have political um, support for the policies. We need the government support for um, uh, for capacity building and also for uh, skills uh, development. We need the academy and institutions support, and also for um, supporting such initiatives in the country. We need the civil society support as well. So, for all the challenges and problems that we uh, face for gender inclusive networks and also for supporting these networks, we need to have uh, support and also uh, engagement and contribution of uh, different levels and also different stakeholders, which are government, academia, institutions, and also private sector. We need the private sector uh, support as well to like uh, train the, um, uh, provide like uh, training or mentorship opportunities and also fund these activities and also provide jobs for uh, these girls uh, and also for um, a lady from uh, Egypt um, she talked about the mentorship program and also that uh, you don't feel like uh, of course um, you cannot like accept a um, male mentor um, there's a program I'm um, like uh, in communication with them through like past three to four years which is called Tech Women which is for uh, MENA countries Pakistan is recently added I think it's for the three years that Pakistan is added they provide a very rich uh, mentorship program out uh, for all uh, MENA Middle East and North Africa countries in the United States and it's supported by um, it's the initiative of, of U.S. Department of State Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs. It's a very rich program. I'm approaching them if they can include Afghanistan as well. But you can take um, like an advantage from that program as well. And thank you. I think you. you can share it on offline, but it's good that you shared. There's some initiatives. We'll take some comments, but we have a video uh, from Gustavo, which was we were waiting. Sarah would like to respond to something. Uh, Renata and then you want to speak? Oh, yes.
One thing which I would like you to highlight is how can women help each other, mentor each other, because mentorship is also something which is important. Oh, Amrita caught me out there. <laughs> thank you, Amrita, and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Good, uh, good, good morning. Um, yeah, mentorship. I wanted to actually look at what you were saying about um, gender-based gender violence, and I speak from the experience of the Association mm -hmm. for Progressive mm -hmm. Communication. So, I think mentorship, um, it's mentorship, but it's also about support networks. So one of the things we've done, and, and I will focus on gender-based violence, is this campaign um, um, that set up, a, that built actually a network. The campaign is called Take Back the Tech, and it's really to, to reclaim technology to, uh, against violence against women. And we started this with a research. So we did a research in uh, way back in 2005, I think, or 2004, when we noticed that there were issues around online violence, at that time, cyberbullying, et cetera. So then from there is when we then started this, this campaign, 2006. So it's now more than 10 years. And we've really built a network of support around that. We have resources that, that looks at safety, strategies that you might use. There have been experiences of, uh, we also have online, I mean, not only offline, not only online campaigns, but actually see campaigns that are offline. So it's people meeting each other uh, and building a network of support. I think the other thing that's important here is that this, the strategy is around when someone is attacked, for example, that's very useful. So what kinds of strategies, sharing all of that, was it, it actually <coughs> happens within the network. So I, so I, I, I I mean, you can look at the, the website, and it's also building awareness, changing policy as well. So it's con not only connected to the support itself, but as well as providing, I guess, the enabling environment around policy and around responses. So that, that's something that I can share. Thanks. Thank you, Chet. Um, yes, Sidra, yeah, Sidra, you then Renata. Hello, morning. I'm Sidra, representing Pakistan. Uh, I work for a nonprofit organization who's working with government to promote this civic and friendly ecosystem all around the country. Unfortunately, Pakistan has become a hub of problems. Whatever problems have been discussed here, unfortunately, we are facing lots of those. Um, similarly, you know, the Malala Yousafzai incident has, has you know, left a very bad impact and a, and a very negative impression of our country all over the globe. But let me tell you, this is just one case. There are women, there are men, there are kids back there in the country who are facing the same issues. But, you know, then there is a ugly side of it and there, then there is a bright side of it. Uh, government has recently launched this education emergency program. I personally believe that education is one of the core problems that will eradicate all these problems one by one, hopefully. So government has declared this education emergency all across the group. And talking about the best practices, we believe that there are three key problems that will eventually help the, this education problem in the country. That is to you know, uh, increase and promote the, uh, the enrollment, the retention, and then the learning outcome of it. Talking about enrollment, government has uh, you know, uh, launched these programs to offer free education to kids, offering you know, free curriculum, free textbooks, free schools and everything, and you know, to promote more retention and to understand this perspective that you know, there are parents who do not consider education as you know, a very important element or they're you know, thinking out loud on this. And I, I have seen such areas back there in Pakistan where even speaking in English is considered as the you know, anti-Islam agenda or things like that. So to encourage parents and to you know, change their mindset, they are even offering incentives to those parents who are sending their, their kids to school. They can get subsidiary on several government initiatives. They're on, on, you know, on ensuring that their kids are going to school and, and on their attendance, they can get some you know, percentage of something and things like that. And to encourage learning, the curriculum is being revised all across the country, you know, be it Punjab or be it Sindh or be it KPK or any other province. There are, they're, they're changing the curriculum and making sure the, the evaluation practices and, you know, teachers are being trained well, they're being well trained and up to the mark and, you know, uh, matching the global curriculum, they are, whatever they are following. 
then uh, there are particular trainings and programs around you know promoting women skills and you know yeah sure just last mentioning you know recently a program is being launched called dg skills where the objective is to offer freelance trainings to those women who are sitting there in their homes and they are probably not being allowed or you know go to a particular center for uh, for formal trainings so this 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 program will eventually train 10000 women per month every year you know and 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 will be evaluated based on you know whatever practices they are following so sorry i have to cut off <laughs> We would like sh very short intervention. We have very less time left. Um, Renata, you, uh, Shridip, anyone from there? Maureen, Saeed, anything? Saeed, yes. Okay, and we have a remote also. Do we? Yeah, you want to? Okay, we'll take it after. Renata, please continue. Uh, thank you, Renata Kinohibero. A very short uh, intervention. It is fantastic to have the theme of this panel here, uh, bringing together uh, the idea of uh, uh, an alliance of uh, regions and uh, gender capacity and capacity building in internet policy. I would like to. Uh, bring in the problem that it's not very easy to do this alliance. Our organization sometimes can be quite uh, traditional and resisted. I was recently censored in a project I made for a, an international I organization just because they thought that uh, there was a part that dealt with gender from a sexual diversity perspective with images of gay parades, and they thought that was offensive. Uh, so we need to be very adamant in um, saying that internet policy needs to be seen also from the lens of gender, and we need to be coherent that this is needed in order to have capacity building efforts to advance. Uh, there will be immense uh, reaction, and we must uh, stand still and uh, uh, be ready to support each other to move forward these efforts. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Bach. I'm from Columbia University in New York. Um, just two questions to the panel. One is uh, we work quite a lot on hate speech, and in traditional hate speech, uh, there is uh, generally you try to involve religious leaders and I've never heard especially in you know global south where religious leaders play an active role I've never heard of any sort of gender spectrum online to try to work with them M am I wrong are there attempts have there been attempts that's one and the second question is uh, um, I know that in Malaysia there is I think a program where they have um, male leaders go to communities and tell them that tr to treat women the way they should be treated with respect and dignity um, and I'm wondering if it's possible to emulate similar programs online. Yes, um, the hate, uh, the online violence which is reported is many times, the polit political violence gets more precedence than gender violence, so that's uh, definitely an issue. Um, yes, um, Shridip, Said, uh, Josephine, you wanted to speak? Josephine, right? Uh, this is, uh, this is Shridip, and uh, you know I strongly believe that you know like the, the the interventions need to be very clear in terms of uh, gender inclusiveness, and uh, you know regarding the uh, obstacles or challenges, it's always there. It will it will always be there, because recently when we did our IGF in Nepal. We also faced the same uh, thing about how to make it more inclusive, and there were like issues of you know the barriers, the the, the whole uh, patriarchy thing, and like you know things were there. But how we penetrated was we we had a session where we brought in a transgender woman, and she talked about her issues, and like you know it was just like going through the uh, smaller uh, picture, and like going in, and like you know after the session. Everybody, the, the, especially the youth, it was a youth session, and they, they loved it. And, and you know, like, it, it's like moreover like the interventions that we work on. You know, it, it's how we should. We should pragmatically talk about interventions rather than policies, because policies would r follow. 
first we have to work by our uh, practice and by our interventions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shridip Said. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Said. Uh, I'm an APSEG Amazon fellow coming from Afghanistan. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that there's not enough men who are kind of part of the problem to listen to, to, to the concerns that we have here, but I hopefully they will, they will kind of go through the transcripts and, and the recordings, uh, hopefully. Uh, one thing that I wanted to comment on was the fact as, as a previous public servant in, in the government of Afghanistan, I, I can assure you that there's not a lot happening from the government uh, side in, in my country, and that I, I believe creates a lot of problems and puts a lot of pressure on the civil society organizations in the country, um, partly because the work that civil society and human rights organizations are doing, particularly in, in religious sensitive countries like ours, uh, they are not taken as positively as, as, as they would in other developed countries. Um, also, um, the donor, donor organization or international development organization are also not taken very seriously or not very, I would say, with a lot of respect. So all of the activities that civil society organization would do, they would come across a lot of hindrance, a lot of resistance. So I believe, as, as like I said, previous public servant, I believe things need to be pushed through policies and legislatures within the government. Thanks. Thank you. We have an online question. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we have, we have a comment that says, uh, hi, my name is Swati. I'm from India. I think, uh, I think Shivana has raised a very good point that a comprehensive sort of approach, including government, civil societies, and academia, uh, would help address the issue of gender divide. All of these need to join hands to empower women. Right now, ICT policies and empowerment strategies in India operate in separate slots. Uh, CSR does training in communities also, but all these efforts are scattered. There is need of research, which will also identify and look into uh, how internet is diffused in marginal communities. And then we have, a, uh, then we have another question from another participant, uh, Lokeshi from India as well, and it says, uh, I agree with one of the presenters who said that inclusion is actually inclusion of men also. In many marginalized societies, we need to understand and take into account male context and work with them who could be the gateways of access to women <coughs> and girls. Can ISOP chapters prioritize uh, addressing gender digital divide by allocating research funds? Thank you. Thank you. I think we have to block the, um, any more questions. Josephine, do you want to add something? Quickly, one minute. Then you can give your final comment. My name is Josephine Miliza, and I'm an ISOC ambassador from Kenya. I just wanted to add the role that mentorship plays in empowering young women. In our place uh, in Kenya, our training program, we used to receive over 300 applications, but only less than 30% are from, were from young women. So one initiative that we did, we went out and started doing outreach program for young women. And we noticed that it's not just an awareness thing, but it's also a confidence issue. So sometimes in b before even you address the tech gap, also address the issues that young women are facing with regards to access to technology and the confidence they need in able to pursue any career that they want then they can be able to connect technology to whatever career they want to be able to take in future. Thank you so much. We have just two minutes. Everyone has, uh, you know, two or three can perhaps speak to address things and summarize. I'm not going to summarize anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, uh, can you hear me? Just coming back to John Kerr's um, question. Um, I think it's a, it's a question to all the panel members as well as to everyone. How do we work with big corporations and organizations? And I think John can, can probably pursue this, um, maybe in terms of what we are doing with the research, and maybe you could add a bit more later in the future and see how we can work on this. Um, in terms of the... Um, the point, two points have been raised about men, including men, and I totally agree, and that's why I said in the beginning, it's very important that we sort of use um, um, men as catalysts to actually empower women. And, and this is very critical, because when we talk about gender, it's not just about women, huh? it's about men as well. And um, what uh, Gunella said in terms of inclusive, I also agree, persons with disabilities, but it's not just about persons with disability, working with women, but also working with the minorities and um, ethnic minorities, sorry. And uh, the other point I wanted to raise was, um, we've done a lot of initiatives in the Pacific, but does not much. 
um, happening in the sense that uh, we've got a Pacific Women's Network and we sort of look at um, high level Pacific women issues, but we tried to do a workshop on gender, ICT and women and unfortunately, this was done in 2007, unfortunately it doesn't you know, kind of continue because there is no support because they don't really, there is a disparity between what they understand and what they don't understand. So there's also within the Pacific Minister's uh, meeting, clearly we need to also sort of kind of educate and make them aware of these sort of issues. That's it. I just want to add uh, something to uh, to his comment from Nepal uh, that uh, how what can we do to involve more women to encourage uh, women to have more participation in such kind of programs that uh, we can we can consider uh, at least one woman at least one female uh, who is presenting uh, her own experience and uh, how how uh, how she has been through these all to come this far uh, can be a good idea to, 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 to encourage all other women to be involved in such issues. And for uh, young ladies, uh, it, it is good. It is good to, to uh, put your efforts to find some programs for mentorship uh, to, to, uh, to help you. But I would suggest from my own experience, do not depend, to, do not be dependent to anyone, to any program. You can, you can just, uh, uh, you can just try it by yourself because some initiatives are just by saying they, 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 they are just like for, uh, for receiving funds from people, but they don't do exactly like what, what is needed for women. They just use women's name, be yourself. And, and our, we have one more thing. Okay. And our, uh, AFSEC, <laughs> and our AFSEC, I should, I should tell this, I'm sorry. In our AFSEC and our event, I was the only woman when I was presenting the, um, what is IG related issues, no, no one, the, all the other, all the girls uh, were present there among uh, participants. No one had a, an idea of what is IG, what is IG related issues. Then after, uh, like uh, when, when I presented what is IG related issues, how it can be uh, benefic beneficial to their lives, how they can use uh, like, uh, like uh, anything. Then they go to know, then they are uh, uh, interested in such issues. Now they are contributing me. <laughs> Thank you, Nuria. I have to cut you because we are between sessions. Angie, very quick. And it is necessary to include and youth women in this discussion and the programs and youth IGF ambassadors and special interest group, the women, the internet society, is a great idea. I invite and participate. So I would conclude the session. Thank you so much. We have certain papers around in case you want a copy of the draft preliminary reports and want to sum, submit some comments, please send it to us. We are still improvising on it. Thank you. We need to collaborate as women. That's something which is true. For mentoring, we need to hold each other's hands to grow. You can't push someone down. If you know of an opportunity, share it. And I think creating some networks, groups where we can exchange would definitely help. Thank you so much for coming for this. Do you mind taking a photograph together all at the end? Okay, great. Let's